What's going on everyone? This is Mitch with SC Weather. Hope y'all been having a great Sunday. I know this is my second video in a day. I normally don't do that, but um, some things have really changed today uh, that's actually reinforced some of the things I've talked about in my previous video. So if you haven't watched that, don't worry about it because this is new data. This is new information. We're going to really break this down here, um, here in this video for sure. But um, if you guys haven't subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. It's much appreciated. It's an awesome way to support me in these videos. Um, I love talking about my passion, which is the weather. I'm very active on Twitter and, and pretty active on Facebook, much more active on Twitter. But um, I, I'm very engaging. Leave a comment. Leave a like. If you like it, share it. Um, it's, it's always, uh, that's just, like I said, an awesome way to support me. So, like I said, this is the second video today. And, and we're really going to talk about some things that's really going to change here, um, and including areas that may see snow that normally don't see snow. Maybe somewhere in the Carolinas outside of the mountains. So we're going to break that down here. Um, so let's just get going here. So first off, we're going to start off with the European model. We're going to go through all the models. Stay tuned. This is going to be a lengthy video. So we're going to really break down what an operational model is going to show, what the ensembles are going to show, and, and why at face value it might show blue at that location, but why that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to snow. There's, there's a lot of things that go into it. The warm nose. A lot of warm air evection here, and uh, just there's a lot of warm air aloft that can really mess up what looks like snow on a model. So let's break it down here. We got the European model, and we're going to get through. If you guys don't see this very clearly, um, we're going to zoom into these areas where the snow is going to set up here. So this we're at Thursday, right? That's this Thursday coming up. We're getting through Thursday. Here comes the system. Notice it's getting in here. It doesn't. You don't. You still see a lot of rain. But as we get into the next time frame, we're getting into Friday. So this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about a Friday into Saturday storm. Um, notice it's going to be hard to see, and I'm going to get a little bit closer here in a minute. But notice snow is starting to break out in the mountains. This is definitely a CAD event. Cold air damming. So. Uh, Tennessee, I'm not seeing much of a vent for you until the storm starts to pull away and you can get some cold air filling in behind whatever the moisture is left. This going might, might be a low pressure that might be transferring to the coast. And here it is right here starting to get going. But check out the snow. This is snow outside of the mountains. This is snow in North Carolina. It's getting awfully close to the North Carolina, South Carolina line. And as it's getting here, it's moving on. This is some pretty decent heavy snow breaking out here. And it's getting into Virginia. This is this is a decent looking snowstorm. And check it out in Delaware, parts of um, Maryland. It's awfully close to Washington, D.C. But uh, this storm, it, it's going to be a tricky one altogether, and it moves on out. The northeast, you need to watch this storm because it could trend northwest, and uh, there's, a, there's a decent amount of cold air to work with where that could be a big storm. But you keep moving out in time here, and check out this other storm. The GFS has this storm too. This is going to be the next one to talk about, and it gets going late weekend, and this is Dallas, Texas, for example. This could be a big storm for y'all, and then that is some that is a massive snow winter storm uh, for northern Louisiana. But what happens here is it gets, gets kind of sheared out, um, and it weakens, and there's just not enough cold air. The cold air really isn't entrenched in the southeast. But we're not going to talk a whole lot about that one yet. But here we go. This is the uh, snowfall off the European, the operational run. Um, and it's really aggressive. We're going to get a little bit closer here in North Carolina, Virginia. But you look here at, the, at a wider view. Um, it is That is a cold air damming look to it um, where you get a lot of snow a, a, along the uh, higher elevations of the mountains and just east. And uh, as the upper level lows kind of pulling away or, or cranking off behind the storm, you get a burst of heavy snow um, even into Tennessee. Um, we get a little bit closer here. <clears throat> and here it is. This is really impressive for the European model. It's been very aggressive with some storms lately, but it's 7, 9, 10 inches. This would be heavy, heavy, wet snow, guys. I, I can't stress that enough. It really would not be a sleet, a freezing rain kind of event with this. It would either be rain or snow. I'm really thinking that here. But you notice um, Smoky Mountains has hit good. This might be a, a, a good weekend to... To, to maybe take the kids to the mountains if you want to see snow or something and you live somewhere like me that hardly ever sees snow. Might be a good weekend for that, but we'll, we'll definitely talk more on that here. Um, but even the snow starts to break out, heavier snow 
and outside of the mountains. It's awfully close to Charlotte, not quite there. Maybe small parts of South Carolina. The trends here is just very, we need to develop some kind of trend about what this storm's going to do. So this is the GFS right here. The latest one, 18Z, that's the latest the latest GFS. Here comes our low pressure. One thing I want to talk about and notice here in, in this storm, it's actually the low pressure shifted even more south compared to 12Z, um, <clears throat> which is a good good thing. The thing that just really stinks here is there's no high pressure anywhere. There's nothing really funneling any kind of cold air down. That's why this cannot really be, it's not showing to be a, a widespread snowstorm or winter storm for the Carolinas or maybe Georgia or something like that. But here we go, going to the next time frame, we're getting into Friday morning. You still got snow breaking out in North Carolina. We're, stay tuned. If you're still with me on this video, stay tuned. We're going to talk about just because you see blue here doesn't mean it's snowing. And just because you see green doesn't mean it's not snowing. So here's this low pressure that we got here. Um, it's actually a very good position, uh, a good track here, actually, even for South Carolina. But there's just not a lot of cold air at the surface uh, really in place to make this worthy of any kind of snowstorm, winter storm. But as it gets going, it, it's, it's throwing a little burst of heavy snow here in eastern North Carolina. And as you just saw, areas of central North Carolina um, areas of uh, the triad of North Carolina and then the storm gets going and it really it's just a little bit too far south for areas of the Northeast so we look at the GFS snowfall totals it's definitely if I could I could show you the 12 Z which was more much more aggressive but as you can tell here it's definitely not as uh, aggressive as the European model but it still shows a few inches of rain throughout uh, rain few inches of snow throughout North Carolina and actually has a decent little uh, area. You probably barely can see it on your screen here in far eastern North Carolina where the storm really gets cranking and the cold air is able to chase up with some heavy precipitation. Um, but here we go. If we look, this is what I want to talk about. So you've seen the European, you've seen the GFS, how much snow is it pumping out. Um, we're going to show you soundings. And I know this, this might be a little difficult to understand for some. And I get it because I, I'm still learning them. But <clears throat> here we go. So the storm's right here, right? So let's click this area in blue where it, it's showing us that it's snowing. You click it, this is the soundings up in this area. It's 33 degrees, right? So it's close to freezing. But check out how the dew points and the temperatures. This green right here is the dew points. The red is the temperatures. If you look right here, it jumps, it jumps this way. So this is the 32 degree line right here. Uh, this is going off Celsius. So zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So this jumps up. What this is telling me is there's a, there's a pretty decent warm nose. So uh, this would probably be all snow. This would. But if you look right here and, and you get really close to just south, I'm going to show you where a stout warm nose would be. Um, it's 33, 36 degrees at the, cells, at the surface, but this is that 32 degree line, the, the Celsius line. So the Celsius line, the 32 degree line. I don't know why I said Celsius line. So you got 36 degrees at the surface, uh, probably a 30, a 35 degree dew point, and you have basically a warm nose. You see, we call this a warm nose. It's like a nudge this way in the sounding. So there's warm air aloft that's really going to try to disturb any kind of precipitation that's falling as snow. Uh, so this is either a, a heavy, wet snow, and you're going to need dynamic cooling, which means you're going to need heavier precipitation to fall for this to fall in the form of snow. If you get any kind of light precipitation, it's going to fall as rain. You need some kind of dynamics. You need just heavy precipitation. Um, if, if anybody's watching that um, here in Lexington, the Columbia area, who experienced a crazy November 1st, 2014 snow, that was under a cold, uh, cold pocket of loft, a cold air pocket of loft, and the and heavy precipitation. So it was pouring down, snowing at 36 degrees, 35 degrees, coming down so hard that it was able to stick in roads. 
So that's a good example <laughs> if you're watching and uh, you live in this area, but this storm gets going and you click here that this might, the cold air is beginning to be able to work in here. Um, let's click this sound and see if this is even better example. 34 degrees. So you got 34 degrees at the surface and you're going to need some heavy precipitation. The DGZs don't look super impressive. So uh, this is, this is going to be a fine line of, uh, is it cold enough at the surface for it to snow? And do you have enough cold air aloft for this to fall as snow? And I don't see a ton. It doesn't really get cold until way up here. So this is going to be tough. This is going to be, um, and, and this is even a more impressive uh, way to look at a warm nose. This is uh, basically everything in blue means it's 32 degrees or lower in the upper atmospheres, uh, the up, their upper atmosphere. So if you look here, the line kind of nudges out here. It's because you got low pressure and it's throwing a lot of warm air aloft into this area. Well, this area just happens to be where the precipitation is. And so if you have 35 degrees and uh, you don't have a lot of cold air aloft and say in this area, then it's probably going to fall as rain. Um, and that's just because it's just a stout warm nose and, and, and for us in South Carolina, if we're, uh, this is just going to be an example of a cold rain. And you just don't have enough cold air at all levels of the atmosphere, and you sure don't, sure as heck don't have enough uh, cold air at the surface. So you know that's a good example of what we're kind of seeing here. So what we got here is basically uh, the European Ensemble runs. You got 50 different members, and it's basically they're all added together to create a mean. And um, basically, you know. It's a pretty good signal of snow here in Asheville, right? You got plenty of members. You flip here. If we look here, we we can check out Raleigh. So Raleigh, even you guys in Raleigh, North Carolina, there is a solid signal for snow. And notice that there's a signal right here, and then there's another signal right here. So there's going to be that's that's going to be that a signal from that other storm that we were talking about in the beginning of the video after this storm. So Raleigh, you know, that's a decent signal. Two inches of snow don't sound like a ton, and there's some pretty big members in here that's really skewing the mean. But, I mean, that's a pretty decent signal for snow in Raleigh. So that's just two main, uh, you know, cities and basically two different parts of the state of North Carolina that I really want to show that there's a signal there even outside of the mountains for sure. This is going to be a tricky system, guys, but um, follow along for sure. Um, uh, because we're going to be talking about this a lot this week. This could this could really be a storm that really affects areas outside the mountains. So, um, and areas uh, east of the mountains this year have not really been hit. It's still pretty early in winter, but that pattern change I've been talking about and everybody else has been talking about is really starting to show up. In the, and really, this storm might be the tone setter for the pattern change that we're really about to get into. So, appreciate y'all watching and uh, y'all have an awesome night.